Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International with me Keith Johnston. The Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for Infrastructure Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting at Qadabia Palace. In recognition of the International Day of Democracy, the Cabinet commended Bahrain's achievements in this field as a result of support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The Cabinet stressed the importance of the next phase of the Kingdom's democratic process in the upcoming parliamentary and municipal elections. The Cabinet congratulated His Majesty King Charles III on his accession to the throne as King of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland and wished His Majesty success in carrying out his duties. The Cabinet also noted the exemplary reign of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her service to the British people and her measurable contribution to bolstering long-standing relations between Bahrain and the United Kingdom. The Cabinet discussed and approved several memorandums during the meeting with the following outcomes. Memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding a draft decree law amending Article 3 of Decree Law No. 27 of 2002, establishing the Constitutional Court. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on a draft law ratifying the Earth Services Agreement between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Republic of Chile. A memorandum of the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on a draft law ratifying the Earth Services Agreement between Bahrain and the Council of Ministers of Bosnia and Herzegovina on Earth Services. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on the Government's response to four proposals submitted by the Council of Representatives and a law proposal submitted by the Shura Council. The Cabinet also reviewed a memorandum by the Minister of Housing and Urban Planning regarding the plan to develop areas with residential buildings. The Cabinet then took note of several ministerial reports regarding several events, including the outcomes of the 158th session of the Council of the League of Arab States at a ministerial level held in Egypt, the outcomes of the first joint ministerial meeting of the strategic dialogue between the foreign ministers of the GCC and Central Asian countries, the outcomes of the 153rd session of the GCC Ministerial Council, the visit of the Minister of the Saudi Sports and the Director for Special Affairs of the Private Office of His Royal Highness the Saudi Crown Prince, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Defence and CEO of the MISK Foundation. The meeting of the fifth session of the Islamic Conference of Youth and Sports Ministers. The 25th meeting of the Ministers of Municipal Affairs to GCC and its preparatory meetings held in Saudi Arabia. The visit to the Ministry of Hajj and Umrah in Saudi Arabia. The schedule for events of operation for the period of September to December 2022. Under the patronage of the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, a function was held at Bahrain Bourse to announce the capital increase of Hope Ventures in cooperation with the private sector. It was attended by a number of officials as well as the 30 Hope Ventures investors, including experienced entrepreneurs and executive directors who pledged to empower promising Bahraini entrepreneurs to expand their businesses to global markets. His Highness Sheikh Nasser praised the steps of Hope Ventures, the investment arm of Hope Fund to raise 1.5 million Bahraini dinars as a capital increase in partnership with 30 investors from the private sector. He stressed the importance of integrating roles between Hope Ventures and the private sector in order to launch and adopt many future quality initiatives and creative projects to develop a supportive and stimulating investment environment for young entrepreneurs in the Kingdom which is in line with the directors of His Majesty the King and the vision of the government, led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, and Bahrain's vision 2030. His Highness Sheikh Nasser commended the joint investment of the private sector in Hope Ventures and the common goals of supporting the Bahraini youth through the entrepreneur's world. He directed the private sector and Hope Ventures to create an ideal environment, guaranteeing continuity of those partnerships that contribute to building a supportive force to entrepreneurs locally. For his part, the Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs expressed thanks and appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Nasser for his continuous support to the initiatives of Hope Ventures, aimed at promoting viable youth projects. He voiced keenness of Hope Ventures on building a solid partnership with the private sector to support the Bahraini youth in launching the small and medium projects.
in continuation of the developmental projects for the educational process in light of the comprehensive developmental process led by His Majesty the King and with the support and follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister and within the framework of the Ministry of Education's construction plan, the Minister of Education, Dr Majid al Nawami, visited two academic buildings that have recently been opened in His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin al Khalifa Al Khalifa Elementary Boys School in the Northern Governorate and the West Reefer Intermediate Girls School in the Southern Governorate. The Minister toured the two buildings and viewed the facilities, which include classrooms that accommodate over a thousand students, science labs and art rooms. On the occasion, Dr al Noemi stated that the Ministry's construction plan includes the construction of 24 academic buildings that include 400 classrooms in cooperation with the Ministry of Works. Noting that the current academic year witnessed the opening and reopening of a number of schools. He added that the academic buildings are distinguished by the use of environmental friendly construction material and advanced e-systems for the educational process. He affirmed that the work is underway to construct more academic buildings and schools to keep pace with the growing number of students and fulfil the needs of new housing areas. The Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments Minister and Chairman of the High Election Supervisory Committee, Nawaf al Moada, issued an edict determining the headquarters of the general polling and counting committees to elect members of the Council of Representatives and Municipal Councils. The Minister issued edicts to form committees to supervise the integrity of the election of members of the Representatives Council and Municipal Councils. The election process in Bahrain witnesses many stages that affirm the sustainability of the democratic approach. Following the issuance of the Royal Order of His Majesty the King to set the dates of the parliamentary election, the election process begins with full compliance with the principle of transparency. From the شهد وطننا العزيز نهضة شاملة لا تخطئها العين المنصفة ولقد جاء توافقنا على ميثاق العمل الوطني ليكون خيارنا الحاسم للمضي قدما في بناء دولة المؤسسات والقانون الحافظة للحقوق الأساسية والحامية للحريات المتزنة والداعمة للعمل الديمقراطي النزيه In an exclusive interview with Bahrain International Television's news centre, the Ambassador of the United Kingdom to Bahrain, Roderick Drummond, highlighted the deep-rooted bilateral relations and his appreciation for Bahrain's sentiments over the demise of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. And it's been very um, comforting to receive so many messages of sympathy and condolence from um, so many people in the kingdom, including His Majesty and His Royal Highness and so many other leaders and people from all walks uh, of life. Um, Her Majesty and the Royal Family have had a very strong impact, uh, positive impact on our relations for many years. Uh, her visit here in 1979 and many engagements uh, in London uh, with Bahraini leaders um, we're all marked, I think, by a very positive spirit and um, uh, I know she was very fond uh, of the kingdom. So, as you say, the ties go back over 200 years and they, uh, I think, are extraordinarily deep and broad um, and they continue to develop in new ways. So, uh, you know, there are areas of foreign policy and defence cooperation which remain very strong and we continue to uh, work closely together with our Bahraini partners. Um, there are areas of economic collaboration, of trade, investment, uh, which I'm pleased to say are in both directions to the benefit of both countries, both economies. And so many people-to-people -people ties. You know, bah um, Bahrainis, uh, I hope, feel at home in the UK. I know so many go to study in different institutions, at school and university uh, across the United Kingdom, in all parts of the United Kingdom. And uh, Britons who come here, uh, I am told by many of them, feel so much at home, 
um, stay here for long periods and I hope make a really um, positive contribution in different areas, in profes different professions uh, in the kingdom. And um, no, it's a, it's a relationship that continues to um, expand, develop, is balanced, uh, it works to the benefit of both sides, and it's characterized by deep friendship, um, understanding of each other, um, and um, uh, you know, I'm very I'm humble to be the ambassador here, um, that, uh, that things are going very well. King Charles III addressed both Houses of Parliament and received condolences from British lawmakers, the first time he has done so as sovereign and head of the State of the United Kingdom. The ceremony is an important one in cementing the relationship between government and the monarch. King Charles III said that he was deeply grateful for the condolences given by the speakers of both Houses of Parliament. The ceremony in Westminster reaffirms the relationship between the Sovereign of the UK and the Parliament, with true power lies in a constitutional monarchy. Like so many people remembering the Queen since her death, he praised her dedication to duty and promised to emulate her to the best of his ability. King Charles III arrived in Edinburgh to accompany his late mother's coffin on an emotionally charged procession through the historic heart of the Scottish capital to a cathedral where it will lie for 24 hours to allow the public to pay their last respects. Charles and his wife Camilla, the Queen Consort, were driven from the airport to the royal family's official residence in Edinburgh, the Palace of Holyrood House, where Queen Elizabeth II's coffin lay overnight in the throne room. On their way, they passed large crowds of people who were packed behind metal barriers along the Royal Mile. Charles and Camilla got out of the car at Holyrood House and greeted people and looked at floral tributes before a gun salute boomed from Edinburgh Castle. <laughs>